Hey everybody, good to see you back once again. I'll just cut right to the chase. I'm trying really hard to format all the information I've crammed between my ears these last two days. I've done nothing but stare at X231, try different mock-ups, line up parts. I've got two of everything, comparing, contrasting, weighing options. We've got two flywheels out here, two live power shafts, two live power clutches, and I've even got the prototype belt pulley drive thrown into the mix with odds, ends, bits, and pieces everywhere. But to sum it up, I'm confident we can retain the majority of the prototype live power system and make it sound, make it functional, and make it so that it does not pose any risk to the back end of that tractor whatsoever. Granted, a few pieces are gonna be complete write-offs, but I can modify, tweak, alter, and fit production pieces enough to, I would say, retain 80% of the original setup for this tractor. The problem is, it's going to require so much work, we're not gonna get through it in this episode. And I could stand here for the next 30 minutes and go blah, blah, blah to the camera, lay it out verbally, but until you're actually here and can see the things going together that I'm talking about, it's gonna be really hard to stay on top of. So. We're just gonna break it down, take it in smaller bites. But a piece of very good news, rather exciting too, I think we can get the transmission bolted up to the back end right now. I had it in my brain that that life power shaft was going to have to be fed into the front of the rear end housing before the transmission could go on because it wouldn't all fit in from the back. I was wrong when I was doing some mock-ups back here. I found that since we line board this whole bearing housing, changed it just a little bit, that whole power shaft can be fed in right from the back of the tractor. So we've got a couple things to address on this rear end housing first before we can slide those together. Let's get rolling on that right now. So the first thing we have to address is the hole that somebody drilled through this case flange and it lines in with this um, relief pocket for the shift rails. So you can see there's a pocket for each one because sometimes the rails stick out the back a bit. And for some reason, they drilled this one all the way through to the outside. And it was just a little under three quarter diameter. So I went and just trued it out with a reamer so that I can put this three quarter cup plug in there, seal it right up. And of course it was seeping quite a lot of oil. You can see in the before picture, some of that came from the three point lift, but a lot of that was seeping through there because it can migrate past that rail. I don't know why they did it either because that fourth gear rail doesn't stick out that far when it's at its rearmost point. You see that? That would not have been enough to bottom in that original pocket. So for whatever reason, it's there now. So we'll just tap that in as long as it's handy. Get that part done. Okay, we're flushed out nicely there. Looking good. We are gonna to have to go back, I believe, to episode 28 when I made this gasket. This is the special 15 thousandths thick gasket that goes between transmission and back end. And of course, that plays a big role in setting backlash, pinion to ring gear. December 13th, 2018 is when that episode aired. This has been in storage for a while, so I am going to back this up with a little bit of sealer. It's so thin, we don't have a lot of compressibility there. So in case our flanges are not pristine anymore, we'll give this just a little bit of help. Okay, we're all gooped up. Gasket is stuck in place. I'm going to use the cherry picker with the strap for a lift assist because most of the weight in this transmission is in the back end of it. So we'll just get a little bit of tension off it with this and then I can pick the front and we can slide it right down.
because these alignment dowels are such a tight fit, we do have to draw it up carefully with the bolts. Make sure we still have backlash. Our gears are not binding, so that's all looking good. Okay, we've got most of the bolts in and tight. And just monitoring backlash here real quick. Still happy with that. So we've got three bolts though that won't go in. And this is typical prototype fitment issues that are to be expected by now. So we remember from this cover on the bottom of the transmission, at the time that we put it on, we noted how they had done some grinding back here because it was awfully close to that bolt hole. Well, we can make this one go if we get the lock washer up against the flange first and then start turning it. It has just enough room to clear, but this one, is a no-go. You can't turn it, okay? You can, yeah, the, the corners on the head hit that cover. So, what I'm gonna do, get this one out of the way here. There we are. I'm gonna take this cover back off and then see how those two bolts fit and then decide how we're going to put that back on. Just my luck, the last guy that was in here sealed that up good. tight and I managed to position the flats up near the top so yep that'll fit now I need to make a new gasket but I can keep that same thicker gasket material which is good and the grinding that they did here just clears the head of that bolt with the flat at the top if I had put a point at the top wouldn't have went all right get this figured out And now the other problem I've got, last bolt, and you see how tight it is beneath that clutch pedal. Yeah, there's no way you are going to get this bolt with the lock washer in under there. So when we took this tractor apart, there just was not a bolt in this hole. They realized that the clutch pedal was going to interfere with that and they just took it out and let it be. So. You can start a bolt in here. It just clears under that shaft that the pedal pivots on. So what I did instead, I had this Rockford bolt. It is the correct bolt, but as you can see, it's uh, a bit pitted. It was in a bad spot. It's about seven eighths less than pristine. I just put a custom grind on it, all right? I'm saying no harm, no foul because they ground on the cover down there. I'm just putting their same methods to use and we can't fit a lock washer in there either because it's gonna put the head out just too far. But I figure a modified bolt is better than no bolt at all, even if it's just to keep the threads clean. This way, once we get it tight, there. Just enough left to get the wrench on it. Tighten it in. That ground out spot is right near the top. So we can fit that pedal back in place and we have just enough room on that pivot. Nothing is going to hit. So 
Once again, that is the prototype nature of this machine. You will encounter a lot of special scenarios like that. All right, with that, we finally got all the flange bolts put in. As usual, that was way too much work for just a little bit of progress, but that's how old Christine likes it. Bottom cover's back on, resealed, new gasket, and these two back corner bolts here and here barely cleared the heads of those two bottom flange bolts, but it did all fit. So we can't put it off any longer. Now that we have these two pieces joined together, we need to prove out our line boring job that we did years and years ago. We did everything that we could think of to make sure this opening was on par with that opening just off the tip of my finger. I just blocked it, see that? There it's open again. That's where that live power shaft has to go. All these openings have to line up perfectly with one another to make sure nothing binds and that everything passes through just fine. This could go very, very good or very, very bad. I don't know what I'd do if I had to move that opening. I don't even want to think about it. So we'll go over here. Here's the live power shaft. So it mounts on two taper bearings right back here. And just like the spindle of a car, that's what that is. This is the original sleeve that went into that bearing board that we line board and it had been spinning in there like crazy. That is an oil hole that is supposed to allow oil into the bearings. It had spun so much it wasn't even in alignment anymore. These bearings had been running dry. They were just trashed and the whole thing was supposed to be held in with this snap ring toward the front about here and that snap ring groove had completely blasted right out of there and there was nothing left. It was irrecoverable. So last time before we took the break from X231, I turned out a new sleeve, all right? Takes the place of this old one and we have located the oil inlet hole right there and I have an integral step in the middle whereas this one relied on this snap ring between the races but every time that snap ring rotates or uh, migrates in there, the opening that is supposed to be in line with that hole to let oil in also blocks that off. So what I did was I just made that, instead of a snap ring in there, it is just an integral um, step on the inside of that uh, sleeve. And we pounded new, two brand new bearing races in, two brand new bearings for it. And this all went on the back of the live power shaft Let's see, that goes forward, all right. Second bearing in from the back. And they had this nasty heavy washer, which you could tell had allowed the nut to back off and it dropped and everything ran loose. We're gonna bypass this, all right. I'm, I'm sure this had a fold over lock on it at one point and they probably did away with it and they just mashed that back there and it was not enough to keep that nut tight. But just for temporary mock-up, we can run that nut up there. So that is what locates the rear of this live power shaft. And our oil inlet hole has to face up, but it is also going to handle all of the end thrust on this shaft. Way long time ago, when I first started putting all the parts in this back end, that's that hole. It's got this catch trough that feeds it, lets oil run down into those double bearings. I threaded that so that I can turn a hollow stud or peg if you will that will thread down in that hole and there's going to be an unthreaded end that will locate in the inlet hole right there and i'm going to drill a passage down the center of it so it will not only keep this from spinning it will keep the shaft from migrating forward and back it'll also let oil into that assembly so this is what we need to mock up into that back end get this back apart real quick bearing and sleeve Second bearing off. We take this over to the tractor now. sleeve into the bearing bore.
inner bearing goes on the shaft. Outer bearing now. And the nut, cinch it all together. And do you think I can start threads when I'm on camera? No, here we go, all right, yep. Running out of talent for the day. Maybe it's just procrastination, right? And now, the ultimate test. Can't put it off any longer. Hey, you know what? That spins just fine. There's no bind at all. Nice, like it. So back here, where you can see, where's that key slot? Spin it around. There it is, key slot right there. We have the drive coupling that powers the live hydraulic pump, which attaches here, here, and here. So that hydraulic pump is back here, powered by the live power shaft. So we need it in place for that. And of course, that over center clutch assembly goes right here, drives the PTO gear below it, as well as the belt pulley gear that comes in the side here. So we can take the shaft back out because we still have a lot of work to do to it. So we can put the live power shaft back with the rest of its friends on the bench. So far these are the only good pieces up here, but um, oh, we've got so much work to do here. The important part though, we have a foundation to work from. So far, to the best of my knowledge, everything here should be up to par. It's definitely a relief knowing our line boring turned out. You don't really get a redo on stuff like that. Yeah, you could redo it, but it would be horrible to have to go that far at this point, but nice to have those gears meshed again. And just a little bit of housekeeping to finish up. I got the new Rockford 7 16 bolts in the other day. So we got those two kind of scarred up ones changed out from the release fork in there. And I was able to find, I bought this whole box just to use two bolts, but these are basically new old stock at this point. You can still find some partial boxes around that have been opened and taped up, but these are good grade eights too. Perfect for this application right here. I uh, found these 7 16 ones. Like I said, I only needed two out of the box, but we've got them. I also found some 3 8 and some 5 8 bolts that are coming yet. But I think that's going to do it for today's episode. Really happy with how this turned out. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. And like I said, smaller bites. We are just going to start pecking away at all that live power stuff on the bench. We'll get on top of it little by little every episode. So hope to see you all back for the next battle. Thanks again, everybody.